Good morning, you're watching PA Harness Week. I'm Charlotte McBride. In this week's show, we have a plethora of good races to show you. We've got races from up in the Poconos to right here in Harris, Philadelphia, all the way up to Canada. And we've got some big names to bring you as well. Take a look at what you can expect to see in this next half hour. Coming up, we'll take a look at the Mick Wonderful Mick Wicked in his latest turn on the track, and I'll catch up with the man behind Mick Wicked, David Miller. Plus, Sweet Lou is back in action, looking to claim his 11th win in a row. We'll show you how he did next. Plus, Sebastian K is back on the track. This is racing's fastest paced half hour, and it all starts right now on Comcast Sportsnet. They're off. Kimisabi, and if we look different this week, it's because, as Benny King once was fond of singing, stand by me, Heather. And what we're doing, we're standing because we're standing up for harness racing because this is prime time of the year, ladies and gentlemen. I am talking about we are going to be shameless harness exhibitionists. And if you guys are voracious harness voyeurs, then boy, you, are gonna, you and I are going to get along good for the next half hour. God, that's a lot of syllables. That's almost too much for me to take in. I just kind of excited myself. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Woo! <laughs> All right, great three-year-old action took place where? Tell them, folks. <laughs> at the Meadows. At the Meadows, yes, there is Pennsylvania Sire Stakes out there near Pittsburgh. There is two divisions last week, each one of them going for $100,000. Let me just tell you that sometimes said won one of the divisions in 150 with David Miller. The trainer was Jim Campbell. But we are going to take a look at the fastest PA Sire Stakes division they had. Yes. All right, now number four in here is Mick Wicked. He won the hemp. He won the Adios this year. Now he was the beaten favorite his last time out, so he is looking for some redemption. Number seven is somewhere in LA. Five to two second choice, looking for three wins in a row for the red hot trainer, Jimmy Tactor. As they race around the turn at press time, Mick Wicked out to follow the cover. Going three wide for David Miller, following at press time. Three quarters, one, 20 and four. 27 and one, third panel. Somewhere in LA with the lead. Racing second, Limelight Beach. Mick Wicked closing late on the outside. Somewhere in LA, Limelight Beach. Mick Wicked is a flying on the outside. Limelight Beach gets the first call past the quarter pole and then actually doesn't have that lead for very long though because somewhere in LA takes over past the stands finally a long shot pulls and McWicked is third over which is fine and dandy except his cover is not going anywhere so mm. you know when you watch football and you're like screaming at the quarterback that's what I do when I'm watching harness racing so I'm like David you need to pull this horse now right I, guess what he listened, okay? Mick Wicked comes home a Mick Wicked last quarter. 26 and 4. Pulls off a nose victory in 148 and 3. Redemption. <laughs> yes, redemption. Casey Coleman is the winning trainer. Second was somewhere in LA, and then Limelight Beach was third. And if you want to see Mick Wicked, I do. Who wouldn't? In person. Oh, right here. Here is Philadelphia when? tomorrow in the PA Sire Stakes Finals. So this is a horse you want to come out and see, and he is absolutely amazing. By the way, Charlotte McBride caught up with uh, David Miller, the winning driver, to find out more about this race and the big final here at Harris, Philadelphia. All right, thanks, guys. I'm here with driver David Miller. David, a big day for you and Mick Wicked tomorrow in the PA Sire Stakes Final right here at Harris, Philadelphia. How are you liking your chances in that? Well, I, I like him real well. He's uh, he raced the last leg there at the Meadows and uh, raced very very well. And uh, I actually see him every day. He trains at the same farm I'm at, so I see him every day. He looks looks fit, looks healthy and sound. So uh, I think uh, I think he'll be all right. Now, obviously, you're looking forward to tomorrow, but a lot of talk about the little brown jug as well. I know that Mick Wicked is currently the favorite in that. How is this going to help prepare him for the little brown jug? 
Well, I, I think you know it, it's a it's a good it's a good race. You know, um, well, obviously it's the final, but I mean, uh, you know, it gives him about ten days to two weeks to uh, uh, the, to get rested and go back to his routine and uh, and to get ready for the jug. So uh, I think the timing timing is good. It worked for Big Bad John there a few years mm -hmm. ago. He raced in the final, then went to the Delaware. So uh, you know, hopefully, you have the same results. Perfect. Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Charlotte. And if you think that was all the top free roll pacing action that was going to be coming up on this show, Rongo! That's right. We had the cane pace, the first leg of Harness Racing's vaunted Triple Crown. It's a big deal to Tioga this year. Number six, he's watching with Timmy Dietrich was two to five. Number one, luck be with you with Ron Pierce, four to one. Number five, J.K. End of an Era with Brian Sears was nine to two. Interesting X factor in this race. Number seven, Lion Somewhere, off at 19 to one with Yannick Jingra, was supplemented into this race for 35,000 bucks. More in a minute. Luck be with you, chasing after Lion Somewhere in the initial stages. Beat the drum is six to the outside of Bushwhacker and trailer Duwop Hanover is 13 lengths off a sizzling first quarter, 26 seconds flat. They move in front of us and Lion somewhere forces Luck Be With You into the pocket with a circuit to go. Luck Be With You eager to go on, but Lion somewhere is holding that length and a half lead. Stevensville's moving a much closer third. Now he's within four and a half lengths of the lead and the North America Cup winner, Jake Hand of an era, is moving first over out of midfield. He's watching. Once again, we'll track the cover of Jake Hand of an era with a half mile to go and five lengths to make up wide of Bushwhacker. The trailing pair are Beat the Drum and doo -wop Hanover, and they've got six lengths to make up to catch Lions somewhere with three-eighths to go in the 60th cane pace. 53 and three, a taxing half mile, and Lions somewhere just turned aside a second challenge from Luck Be With You. Stevensville closed off the pocket. Jay Can of an era is carried three wide, but Lions somewhere has opened the lead to two and a half lengths. He's watching is four lengths in arrears as the field turns for home. Three quarters, one, 21 and three. Lions somewhere hits head stretch with a three length lead. He's watching, is chasing valiantly down the grandstand side. Jake Hand of an era just one paced. Lions somewhere 70 yards from home's holding clear. Lions somewhere upsets in the cane. Lions somewhere left like a skull in a cat and quickly grabbed the racetrack. Cutting Francie splits of 26, 53 and three, and one, 21 and three, daring everyone to try and catch him. And even even though he's watching was closing like his sulky was on fire he couldn't catch the lion who won it in 149 and four number three do up Hanover off a of 25 to one with Corey Callahan got third and guess what we caught up with winning driver Yannick Jingra to find out what happened and how did he ever pay 19 to one on anything Yannick this horse was a long shot but you didn't really drive him like a long shot you must have known he was a little better than the public did going into the race yeah, I was kind of surprised, you know, going to the gate. I saw he was like 18, 20 to 1, you know. So uh, I thought the horse really belonged in there. Like, you know, the owner, I and Jimmy had, had talked about it, and we all thought it was a good idea to supplement him for 35000 So, we, you know, obviously we thought he had a chance. Now he is going to the jug. Explain to everybody the fact that this is very rare circumstances that he can go to the jug, right? Yeah, I think that the, the way the, uh, the only way you can supplement to the jug is that you have to win either uh, one of the three races, the, the big the big three, I guess, the North America Cup, the Metal End Pace, or the Cane. So uh, he had to win one of those, those three, and obviously the first two were got out of the way, so uh, that was his last chance. And uh, once he got it done, and now that was the plan, you know, supplement to the Cane just, you no know, to take a shot at the jug. Is this your little brown jug winner? I certainly hope so, you know what I mean? I, I've had some good chances in it, but uh, you know, he, he's so handy, he can do it either way. You know, obviously, uh, he showed the other day he's really fast off the wings, so um, all, uh, all good for the jug. Lion somewhere and McWicked, two awesome horses. They're meeting up in Delaware, Ohio at the Little Brown Jug. It's going to be fierce. Woo! Okay, yeah. action continues. Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs, Friday's eighth, a goodie. Phillies and Mayors, non-winners of 18,500 bucks in their last five starts, 18 dives on the line. Number one, Marathon Day with Georgie Knapp was odds on at four to five. Number two, I command my spirit. How cosmic. With Mike Simons at number eight, Crispy Apple with Andrew McCarthy, both seven to two. And with a call, 
Here's George Anthony. Crispy Apple has opened up now to two and a half lengths. Marathon day in the pocket. I command my spirit two more into third. Sir Jillian Zetam is fourth. Goddesses Rose are next into that fifth spot. You have Dragon's Queen and the early trailers stuck like glue. Bill Mar Scooter, St. Lads, Morgan can see them all as they click the half mile, 54 and four. Down the back stretch, the final time, and it's Crispy Apple, the one to catch by two lengths. Marathon Day, the favorite tracking in the two hole. Then we got a gap of three to I Command My Spirit. Up along the inside, Sir Jillian Zetam, fourth. Motoring up on the outside, UF Dragons Queen starting her campaign as they click three quarters of a mile in a one, a 21 and two. It's Crispy Apple and Andrew McCarthy. They're stepping on the gas, still hanging on to two and a half lengths. And Marathon Day seems to have the only shot to catch her as they turn for the wire and an eighth of a mile of pace. And it's Crispy Apple hanging in there. Heather, Crispy Apple, as you know, is a legit stakes man, right? Well, she exploded out of the gate and won for fun in 148 and four by three open lengths. Marathon Day, who got a perfect two-hole trip but still couldn't get a sniff of the winner, was second. Sir Jillian Z. Tam off it, 10 to one with Pat Lachance, got third. And when we come back, Harness fans, more action from what he can set up open and down. Don't go away. Now a golden receiver will have his shot in the pocket. Tonight, it's race night. Where the biggest events roll like thunder all season long. At Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs, race night is your time to shine. It's Mac Lobel, and he's pouring it on. It's Nyatrost Trust by four, and he's going away. The Harness Racing Museum and Hall of Fame, a place where heroes come to life, preserving harness racing's treasured past while promoting its exciting future. And now get ready to harness your excitement with the thrill of Harness Racing's 3D Simulator. The Harness Racing Museum and Hall of Fame, now offering free admission. Bigger, better, bolder than ever. Hi there, welcome back to PA Harness Week. This lovely lass is Heather Vitale. I'm Steve Ross. More action of plenty. Saturday's 10th at Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs. A condition pace. Check out this condition. Non winners of 37,500 bucks in the last five starts. Hello. 24 dimes on the line. Dynamic Youth was a six scratch, reducing the field of starters to five. Number two, Golden Receiver. Fresh off a winning dead heater. One to two with Simon Allard. Number one, Ideal Matters with Ant Knapp was three to one. Number four, Eric Cash Hanover, nine to two with Tyler Buter. The ideal matters leads it by about a length and a half now. Golden receiver, sneaky in the pocket there, just uh, hanging around for a lard. And it's Eric Cash Hanover, first over now for Tyler Buter, within two of the lead and coming up behind that smooth criminal and big time promise going to save ground fifth, and he's only about four away. Ideal matters still has the edge, but things are tightening considerably now. Three quarters, 121 and four, 27 and one third panel. Ideal matters holding on to that lead. On the outside, pressure coming from Eric Cache Hanover. Out three wide, smooth criminal, and now Golden Receiver will have a shot in the pocket. Top of the stretch, Ideal Matters with the lead. Golden Receiver up the passing lane. Late kick from Smooth Criminal. Golden Receiver, Smooth Criminal on the outside. Golden Receiver, Smooth Criminal still trying. Not going to get to Golden Receiver. Ideal Matters cut the fractions. Golden Receiver sitting chilly in the two hole. Golden, Golden receiver, receiver then grabbed the top in the lane. But was life and death the whole of number three smooth criminal long a shot on the board at 16 to 1 with Joe Pavia jr Who just missed by like this much? 149 and three Eric cash Hanover was length back in third We're not done condition trotters are up next and Mabu Heather's got that for you. Thank you non winners 22,500 last five starts again You said these are trotters the purse is 21
$1,000. Number seven is Sabruga, beaten favorite in his last start, but he's taking a drop down in class and he's getting the most respect on the tote board. Number two is Money on My Mind. I love that Snoop Dogg song. <laughs> mind on my money and my money on my mind. Yep. Number eight, a mystery woman. One of three ladies in the field. She has her work cut out for her though. She's taking a step up in class and she has the outside post. Sabru got third in tough preferred company last time out. Drops down now for George Knapp and is the one to two favorite leading by a length and a quarter. Money on my mind, a good spot here for Anthony Napolitano, the mayor mystery woman. An impressive winner last time out. Steps up and settles third for McCarthy. Stays single file to smile and Eli. Still trying to find his stride this year. And the mayor, as y'all like it, is fifth. And then further back to Celebrity Cowboy and My Love Buy. Nothing has changed as Savruga rolls to the half in 57 even. 29 and two, second panel. George Knapp, a nice rate job there. And Savruga looking strong here. Stretches the lead out to a length of three quarters. Money on my mind is hanging with him and gets a little bit closer for Anthony Napolitano. Two more back there to Mystery Woman third, then a big gap to uh, Smile and Eli. Outside my love by then as y'all like it in Celebrity Cowboy. Sevruga the lead back down to a link, but now accelerating again as they come to the three-quarter pole in 124 and 127 one, one third panel. Sevruga trying to shake the pressure of money on my mind, still with a shot, only a length and a half away. And it's Mystery Woman saving ground. To the outside comes my love by and fourth. Top of the stretch. Sevruga looking to seal the deal. George Knapp asking for more. Money on my mind on the inside with a good shot at it here now. Sevruga money on my mind. Sevruga digging in. Late kick. Mystery Woman trying to steal it. Mystery Woman! Sevruga dictates the fractions and really doesn't have an anxious moment on the front the entire mile. It's just single file around the racetrack and I'm actually getting my program out, right? And I'm going to start putting down what the finish is in the program, but in deep stretch, did somebody say fight like a girl? Oh, no. Here comes a mystery woman, a late kick like you wouldn't believe. She wins by a neck and one, 52 and three with Andrew McCarthy in the bike. Jonas Zernison is your winning trainer and she pays $24.20 to win. Savruga did hold on for second. Money on my mind was third. All right, when we come back, we're going to have exciting horse racing action from right here at Harris, Philadelphia. Don't you dare go away. Dancing Yankee in control of it here, as it by one. When it's your time to shine, what will you do? At Mohegan Sun, wherever tonight takes you, it's your time to shine. Hello there, and welcome back to PA Harness Week. Boy, did I mention action of plenty at the top of the show? Yes. If I was lying, I was dying, okay? Sunday 6th at Harris Philly, condition pace. Winners over 25,000 bucks in their lifetime, 30 dimes on the line. Number eight, Dancing Yankee, who is not really a harness horse. He's more of a cash cow. Where Tyler Buter was two to five for Amber Buter. Number three, Sparky Mark, five to one with Corey Callahan. Number four, Dee Dee's Dragon with Yannick Jira. And number seven, PH Supercam with Timmy Dietrich, both eight to one. Dancing Yankee in control of it here, as it by one. Emeritus Maximus tracks behind the Buter helmet second as they go around the turn. Sparky Mark is in line third. Didi's Dragon on the inside fourth as they lean around the bend. PH Super Cam in line fifth. One better than Scott Rocks. And the trailer is just a jolt. Half accomplished in 55 and three. Rated 29 and one second quarter. They start up the bank stretch. Dancing Yankee the boss. Emeritus Maximus the passenger. Inside third is Sparky Mark. Racing in fourth. Didi's Dragon as they make their way towards three quarters. PH Super Cam five lengths away from the lead. Scott Rocks in line six. Just the Joel trails the field around the far turn they go. Dancing Yankee unchallenged, uncontested. The eight quarters, 122 and 327 for the split. Leads it by.
by two. Emeritus Maximus, now Sparky Mark drives to the outside. Three lengths back to Didi's drag, and they straighten away for the stretch drive. Dancing Yankee has the lead. Outside, Sparky Mark driving up now. Emeritus Maximus has had the journey out three wide. Here comes Didi's Dragon. Deep stretch, Dancing Yankee kicking forward. Dancing Yankee with a huge class advantage. Toyed with the field, winning for fun in 149-3. and three. Sparky Mark got second just like the betters predicted. Number one, Emeritus Maximus off a of 21 to 1 with Corey Callahan got third and the co-feature on Sunday. Heather's got that for you. That's right. Another purse at $30,000 with top pacer. Number five is Voice of Truth. Leads the field with money earned so far this year. 70 grand in the bank. And number eight is Clint Westwood. Now he's handicapped with the outside post, but he has shown this year to have a 148 and 4 victory. And up on the outside, Clint Westwood drives up now to take over from Adventure Bound. Length and half back to Fancy Free Shark third. Up on the outside, Cambassador starts first over now, flushed by Voice of Truth as they go around the turn. Oka, Texas racing in sixth, two better than Quick Jolt in the trailer, still a sweet ride, eight lengths away from the lead. And Clint Westwood now has the lead, but here comes Cambassador up to Tangle now, 55 for the half. 29 for the quarter, they race up the bank stretch, and it's on. Cambassador's on the outside, Clint Westwood on the inside. These two battling tooth and nail for the lead on the outside. Voice of Truth, well positioned, second over third. Inside Adventure Bound, starting to look for a way out of fourth. Ahoka, Texas, third over, only two lengths away from the lead. Fancy Free Shark to the inside of a sweet ride, and the trailer is quick jolt around the far turn. They go five front from back. Inside Clint Westwood trying to battle off Cambassador. Voice of Truth, rates no longer comes three wide takes the lead the eight quarters 122 and four they straighten the way for the stretch drive voice of truth fired up off cover now takes over Ahoka Texas swings wide to pick up the chase on the far outside moving up a sweet ride dropping back is Clint Westwood it's voice of truth with the lead battle on for place down to the finish Montreal money Teague and voice of truth did the announcer Mike just totally say Montreal money Teague okay yeah I got my mind on my Montreal and my Montreal on my mind. Yeah, so going back. Oh. <laughs> All right, so Clint Westward, he really had to work hard to get to the front there. And then he has to end up battling with Cam Bassett. Um, the two of them just totally get tired. Voice of Truth gets a really, really great trip. Sitting second over, he ends up winning by two lengths and 151 with, as I mentioned, Montreal Money Teague in the sulky. Uh, for tra trainer Brian McGee Jr., a sweet ride was 35 to one. Okay, he took second. Uh, Hoka, Texas, 20 to one. Woo! That horse was third. All right, don't go anywhere. You know why? When we come back, we're gonna go north of the border and we're going to have the big trotter in town. Sebastian K will be in action and also Sweet Lou. Is he going to be able to win number 11 in a row? You can only find out by sticking around. Don't go away. As they turn home, it is Sweet Lou still there with the lead. Clear vision of first over Thorn in his side. Tonight, it's ladies' night. The lights are low. And the stakes are high. Sometimes ladies' night is just a date night in disguise. At Mohegan Sun, wherever tonight takes you, it's your time to shine. The world is full of compromises, but not here, not on this day, not in this race, not in this sport. Every bet is a hope. Return on investment comes in seconds. This is harness racing. We welcome you to the Harness Racing Fan Zone. See it all for yourself. Feel it in all the passion. Share that experience with others. The Harness Racing Fan Zone puts you in the driver's seat. Welcome back to PA Harness Week. She's Heather, I'm Steve, and we're going up north to Mohawk, the $634,000 Canadian Pacing Derby right, final. If it sounded like a mouthful, it was, but it's worth every single syllable, folks. Number three, Sweet Lou and Ron Pierce, undefeated since they started going steady 10 races ago, with one to five. Number seven, Foiled Again, who appears to finally be rounding the form this year, six to one with Yannick Jingma. Number four, Do Me That.
that again with Timmy Teacher with seven to one. And with a call, Ken Middleton. Foiled again with a rush on the outside to take over the lead as Better's Edge passes his stablemate, the Baton. 26 flat the opening quarter. And here comes Lou on the outside. Sweet Lou on the outside. Brushing to the front now for Pierce. Foiled again is back in the pocket spot second. Inside from third belongs to Better's Edge. Clear vision pops out first up fourth. Modern Legend grabs cover fifth. Sixth inside. Do me that again. Thinking out loud is seventh and riding up on the rim. Then it's back inside. Do we find right now eighth inside to captive audience. Ninth and overland is State Treasurer who's been out the route. And Ellis Park is last at a 53 second first half to the final turn. Sweet Lou is still there on top by a length. Pressure from Clear Vision foiled again as third. Modern Legend right there fourth on cover. Buried inside fifth. Better's Edge third panel in 120 and one. And as they turn home, it is Sweet Lou still there with the lead. Clear Vision a first over Thorn in his side. Sweet Lou comes across the racetrack again. And here's Foiled again shooting through now. Up off cover comes Modern Legend. Clear Vision down the center. Modern legend of the far outside looking for one of the greatest upsets in Canadian pacing derby history. Holy smoldering truck, Batman! Sweet Lou get beat! Everything was going according to plan. Sweet Lou sat in for a half, the quarter rather, before blowing to the front. Got the three quarters in one, 20 and one in the stretch. Clear vision, who Lou had parked for most of the mile, took a short lead, but this time, however, modern legend, number one, off at a gazillion to one with Dave Miller, got a perfect second hour trip behind Clear Vision. Blue to the lead in one by three and one, 47 and two. Foiled again, used the two hole trip to get second. Clear Vision lit for third. Sweet Lou finished in the men's room. Also on Saturday night, the Metro final for two year old Pacers, Art Speak, remained undefeated. Scott Zeron winning in 152 and in the, in the Simcoe, three year old open trot. Hambo champ Trixton off a two to five with Jimmy Tactor, one from the 11 post for fun in 152 and two. Now we're coming back into the United States and okay. we're heading to Vernon. They had the Zweig Memorial Finals there. I'm taking over the Phillies. Talk about them first. Okay, the purse was $150,000. It was for three-year-old trotting Phillies. Shaga Carey, your one to five favorite here, last year's champ in her division. And she's been almost flawless this year. The Jimmy Tactor trainee continued to add to her win column with a 153 and four victory as she came up the inside with driver Ron Pierce in the in the $340,000 Wig Memorial trot, the Jimmy Tactor entry of number one, Nuncio, with John Campbell and 1A Father Patrick, went off at 1 to 9. The duo finished 1 2 with Father Patrick winning in 152 and 2. Nunzio was second, number two. Flyhawk El Dorado off at 15 to 1 with Mark McDonald got third. And Heather, everybody's waiting about the big hoss, Sebastian Kay. Let's fill him in, will you? Yes, they had the Crawford Farms open trot at Vernon on this evening and it went for $236,000. Number four, Sebastian Kay. He's only the fastest trotter in harness racing history. Oh, wow. You know, that, that's all right. He's been a Swedish horse of the year since he's come to the United States. He's lost, I believe, one race, right? On an uh, off track. I mean, uh, on an off track, exactly. So this is how much the public likes him. Let me just tell you, he's a favorite in here. The rest of the group includes last year's horse of the year, includes a Hamiltonian champion, um, includes an, another world champion, and they are all double digits. Coming to the top of the stretch, Sebastian K is the leader, but Market Share is right there. Sebastian K and Market Share are one two as they enter the stretch, and Archangel is crying out for some room down at the cones, but Sebastian K is holding steady. Sebastian K does what everybody expected him to. He ends up winning with ease on the front. 153 flat. He can do that with one hoof tied behind his back. This horse is absolutely amazing. Up spin said in the bike for nuts and trotting. Archangel is the world champion. He was second. And then Market Chair, who is a former Hamiltonian champion, he was third. And but coming to this country, Commander Crow and Ready Cash to take on Sebastian K. Keep your eyes and ears focused, folks. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a great Breeders' Crown this year. It is. We'll right? keep you updated. Don't worry. Terrific. <laughs> That's going to do it for this edition of PA Harness Week. And for all of us here, Bruce Casella, Charlotte McBride, Mabu, Heather Vitale, I'm Steve Ross, reminding you to pick up the pace, just a taste, and get yourself high on harness. It's only natural.